The year is 1947. The world heaves a collective sigh as the smoke clears and the rubble of the Second World War begins to settle. Two superpowers emerged from the chaos, the United States of America and the Soviet Union, with very different beliefs and ideologies, communism and democracy. Half a world away, nestled in the lush verdancy of Southeast Asia, Vietnam remains largely untouched by this brewing storm. Yet little does it know, it is to become the stage upon which this grand drama will unfold. In this video, we dive deep into the Vietnam War. Vietnam, a nation rich with culture and history, found itself divided. In the north, the Viet Minh under Ho Chi Minh leaned towards the ideological tenets of communism, strongly supported by the Soviet Union. Across the demarcation line, the South, led by the pro-Western leader Ngo Dinh Diem, favored democracy and found an ally in the United States. For the Soviets, Vietnam was an opportunity to spread the communist ideology further, resist Western imperialism, and establish a stronghold in Southeast Asia. For the Americans, it was a fight against the domino effect of communism, where if Vietnam fell, then other countries would also fall to communism. The United States also wanted to preserve strategic interests in Asia. In 1945, World War II ended, and Vietnam declared itself independent from France under the leadership of Ho Chi Minh, who sought to establish a communist regime in the North. The French then attempted to regain control of Vietnam, leading to the First Indochina War. Both the Soviets and the Chinese provide support to Ho Chi Minh and the Viet Minh. Meanwhile, the U.S., wary of the spread of communism, financially supports the French efforts. In 1954, the First Indochina War came to an end with the Geneva Accords. This temporarily divided Vietnam at the 17th parallel, with the North being ruled by Ho Chi Minh and communism, and the South coming under the leadership of Ngo Dinh Diem and democracy. The Geneva Accords intended for this division to be temporary, with free elections planned to determine the country's future. However, a few years later, South Vietnam's leadership, backed by the United States, refused to hold these elections, fearing a communist victory. In response to this, the United States started supplying South Vietnam with weapons and military training, attempting to bolster the fledgling democracy against the communist North. Meanwhile, the Soviets and Chinese ramped up their support for Ho Chi Minh's North Vietnam, providing military assistance and strategic advice. Now let's pause and zoom out real quick. In this global chess game of Cold War politics, China, the Soviet Union, and the U.S. found themselves embroiled in Vietnam, each supplying weapons and military training to their respective allies. One thing led to another, and you can probably guess what happened next. Alpha 219 is commuting to war. United States Marines head for security duty in South Vietnam. They begin moving inland to link up with the oncoming units of the 327th. President Johnson, responding to these attacks, passed the Gulf of Tonkin Resolution in 1964, which essentially provided him with the authority to use military force without an official declaration of war. He ordered 3,500 troops to be sent to Vietnam at first, but this escalated rapidly, reaching a peak of half a million troops stationed there by 1968 during the Tet Offensive, one of the key battles that escalated the war. The Tet Offensive was a massive coordinated assault by North Vietnamese and Viet Cong forces that commenced in late January 1968, during Tet, the Vietnamese Lunar New Year, traditionally a time of ceasefire. The audacious attack targeted over 100 cities and outposts across South Vietnam, including the capital Saigon and even the U.S. Embassy. The North Vietnamese hoped to incite a popular uprising in the South against the U.S.-supported government. The offensive was initially a shock to the U.S. and South Vietnamese forces, but they quickly regrouped and mounted a fierce counterattack. Militarily, the Tet Offensive was a significant setback for the North Vietnamese and Viet Cong. They failed to incite a widespread rebellion and suffered heavy losses. However, on the psychological and political front, the Tet Offensive had far-reaching impacts. 
The ferocity and scale of the attacks shocked the American public and contradicted optimistic assertions from U.S. officials that the war was being won images of the offensive, broadcast on television and published in newspapers, fueled anti-war sentiments, and widened the credibility gap between what the U.S. government reported and what the American people observed. There were many reasons why the Vietnam War posed such a formidable challenge for U.S. soldiers. One of the key factors was the Viet Cong's use of guerrilla warfare tactics. They seamlessly blended into the environment, vanishing into the undergrowth, treetops, and an intricate network of underground tunnels. This approach transformed the landscape into a hidden enemy, a phantom threat that could strike without warning. The Viet Cong also masterfully deployed booby traps, turning each step the soldiers took into a potential trigger for a lethal surprise. This not only made the physical battle immensely difficult, but also waged a psychological war, where the fear of the unseen was as potent as the fear of the seen. This war was very different than the past wars because of certain technology that was brought into every household in America. Produced for WRC-TV Channel 4 by NBC News, which is solely responsible for its content. Television emerged as a transformative medium during the Vietnam War, providing an unprecedented window into the realities of the conflict for those back home in the United States. For the first time in history, the brutalities of war were broadcast into living rooms across the nation. Nightly news programs showed vivid footage of firefights, wounded soldiers, and the tragic loss of civilian lives, lowering U.S. morale. As the war dragged on and casualties mounted, anti-war protests intensified across the United States. The American public, confronted with the grim realities of the war on their television screens, grew increasingly disillusioned with the conflict. A pivotal moment in the war was the My Lai Massacre in March 1968, where U.S. soldiers killed hundreds of unarmed Vietnamese civilians. The incident, when revealed to the public, further fueled the anti-war sentiment and raised serious questions about the conduct of American forces in Vietnam. By the late 1960s, it was clear that the U.S. was stuck in a quagmire. President Richard Nixon, who took office in 1969, introduced a policy known as Vietnamization, which aimed to gradually withdraw U.S. troops while strengthening the South Vietnamese Army to take over the fighting. Despite ongoing peace negotiations, the war seemed far from over. In 1972, the North Vietnamese launched the Easter Offensive, a massive invasion into South Vietnam. This marked a shift from guerrilla tactics to conventional warfare. Although the offensive was ultimately repelled by South Vietnamese forces with heavy U.S. air support, it marked the beginning of the end. The Paris Peace Accords were signed in January 1973, officially ending U.S. involvement in the Vietnam War. However, the fighting between North and South Vietnam continued. In April 1975, as North Vietnamese troops closed in on Saigon, the U.S. initiated Operation Frequent Wind, the largest helicopter evacuation in history. Chaos ensued as desperate South Vietnamese tried to board the limited number of helicopters. Iconic images captured the desperation of the moment, such as a helicopter taking off from the roof of the U.S. Embassy. In the early hours of April 30th, the last U.S. personnel were airlifted out of the country. But Later that day, North Vietnamese some troops damage, captured Saigon, effectively have... ending the war. The city was renamed Ho Chi Minh City, and the country was unified under a single communist regime. In conclusion, the Vietnam War was more than a national conflict. It was a stark proxy war in the global chess game between the United States and the Soviet Union, emblematic of the ideological divide of the Cold War era. This stark period serves as a poignant reminder of the impact of global superpower rivalries on individual nations. If you liked this video, then check out our video on Christopher Columbus's story. Spoilers, he wasn't the complete hero we were told he was.